choosing a dive computer can be a bit overwhelming. With so many options to choose between a few hundred dollars all the way up to well over $1,500, it's kind of hard to know where exactly you should start. It could be that you're looking now because when you first started diving, you bought that really low priced entry level computer and now you're hoping to get a few more functions out of your dive computer. Or maybe you're someone that's always rented a dive computer and now you're really ready to make that first investment and you know what you're looking for and it's time to go ahead and purchase a computer. In this video, I'll go over the things you should know when it comes to buying your next dive computer. And thanks Shearwater for sponsoring this video, but more on that a bit later. Let's get into it. I'm Thomas Hughes, a professional scuba instructor, and the first piece of gear that I recommend all divers invest in is their own personal dive computer. Now, the problem is there are such a wide variety of different computers out there, and again, at so many different price points from just a few hundred dollars to you know close to 2,000 or even more, depending on what you're looking at. So I think the best way to start is to just lay out what type of features can be found on dive computers so we have an idea of what we should be comparing when we're looking at different models. Dive computers come in two main formats. They could be console mounted or wrist mounted like this. For wrist mounted, they can be more of a square face or rectangular face or more like a standard watch and be a round face like this one right here. A console mounted computer is usually like a puck device that's inserted into your console where your SPG is and your compass or uh, your depth gauge, for example, and it will kind of go into that slot there. It might replace your depth gauge and depending on the model itself, it could also be air integrated, which we'll talk about a little bit later. For me personally, I really enjoy the wrist mounted computers and it could be the watch style like this here or more of the the rectangular shape, a little bit bigger screen. Uh, just depends on what you like there for either an all day watch like this or something a little bit bigger and bulkier. Key thing is with wrist mounted, I can sit in that good dive position, just kind of hold my hands and just kind of take a glance down and see exactly what's on my watch or on my dive computer itself and see my depth and all of that type of thing. With a console, it's the same idea. It's just usually having a retractor or having to grab that uh, whole console gauge and cluster and kind of bring it up in front of me. And it's just a little bit more of a hassle where, especially as an instructor, I like to be able to just see my you know, depth and things like that at a glance. Now, all dive computers, no matter which type you get, are gonna perform the same three basic functions for you. Then anything on top of that is just kind of extra niceties and extra features that may or may not add to your diving experience depending on your needs themselves. And that's why I wanna talk about that here. Now, you're probably asking yourself what those three things are, and that's gonna be your depth, your dive time or the time underwater that you have, and then using those two numbers and those calculations, we're able to determine your NDL or your no decompression limit. The no decompression limit being, of course, the time that as recreational divers, we can spend underwater theoretically and still make a safe ascent to the surface without having to do extra decompression stops or anything like that, in theory. Now, that said, even the cheapest of dive computers usually have a few extra functions on top of that. So let's talk about what those other features might be on top of the basic functionality of a dive computer. And again, some of these features are things that you might be interested in. Some maybe you don't need just yet, but that's why it's important to list these out. So first and foremost, it might be surprising, but some dive computers, even the wrist mounted types like these of the cheapest variety don't even support the clock. So you can, can't even really tell the time of day. Next is gonna be Nitrox. So surprisingly, a lot of dive computers don't support Nitrox at the very entry level. And again, this is just because they're trying to support the basic diver diving on air, and they don't always have those extra features like that. But Nitrox is that enriched air Nitrox or diving above 21% air. And you wanna be able to do that on your dive computer if you're trying to extend your NDL and your Nitrox certified and all those different things, right? So if you're a Nitrox diver and you have a dive computer that doesn't support Nitrox, then you're missing out. Another really nice feature is air integration. And again, not every dive computer supports this. So air integration could be, again, on that console side, having a hose actually run from your first stage into the console computer itself, and it can read the air pressure from your tank. Or it could be through a wireless transmitter that many dive computers support now as well, but not all of them. And that actually plugs into your first stage as a wireless transmitter. And then that will actually wirelessly transmit the signal to your dive computer for you and let you know what your air pressure is at all times. It's really cool. It's, it's a really cool way to dive. And I have a whole video about air integration that I'll talk about in the cards and link down below as well. Another feature you might be looking for is compass integration or digital compass integration specifically. So if you know me, I prefer an analog compass myself usually. However, digital compasses have come a long way. And if you calibrate your computer properly before a dive, you shouldn't have any trouble using a digital compass on the computer itself. These can be uh, a lot more complicated or 
a lot more simplified. Usually they show your heading and directional uh, cardinal directions, of course. Then you can usually set like a marker for a uh, specific heading and it will tell you if you're going off or not from that heading. Then it will give you your back azimuth as well in most cases. So it's a good way to be able to navigate, you know, out and back some different areas like that. And you can use it just like an analog compass, though you don't get to use some of the cheat methods that I talk about in my navigation video that I'll put up in the cards and link down below. Now, again, talking about some of these niceties out there, another one is gonna be an app to sync your dives to. So dive computers are gonna be able to log all of your dives for you, but do we wanna transfer that to a paper log? Well, you might want to, and I'd even encourage you to in some instances, but having an actual digital app that is maybe a good app too, because not all of them are made the same. Some of them are a little bit of a better experience than others, uh, is gonna allow you to sync all of your dives over. So most of these connect on, let's say your phone or to a computer via Bluetooth, and then you can actually transfer all of your dives over. And again, depending on the app and the software, you might be able to do things like have a cloud sync. So your computer, your phone, and all the different stuff that has this app on it can all see the dives that you synced between your dive computer or computers. Uh, or you might have an app that just kind of easily syncs in and it's just logged right on your phone and you don't have it anywhere else. So some things to think about there. Um, and again, some of the entry level uh, dive computers, they don't have any type of app at all. So good luck syncing that over. You're going to have to manually type it into a, a third party app or you're going to have to, you know, hand write it into your log yourself to take it off the computer that way. Now, the last one that I think about as well is gonna be rechargeable versus user changeable batteries. So some dive computers allow you to just pop in something as simple as a AA battery that you can find anywhere. So if your computer dies, you don't have to say, oh shoot, I forgot to charge it. It's just a matter of undoing a uh, user replaceable little tube, pop a AA battery in there, close it back up, check the O-rings and everything like that, and you'll be ready to dive. Um, other ones are completely rechargeable, which have their own benefits as well, where you can just put it on the charger like you would uh, you know, any other smartwatch, for example, and then you can charge it up overnight or maybe charge it once a week, even if it's just a dive watch. So dive watches compared to uh, everyday watches, you know, they might have a lot better battery life. And we'll talk about that some more as well. And these are just things to think about here. Now, all these different features are great, but there's also things called dive modes. And when you're thinking about buying your next computer, it's important to think about what type of diving you plan to do because dive modes, again, can change just like nitrox or not other dive modes exist on the computer as well and we want to know and think about these different things if we're going to be doing some more types of diving in the future again maybe you know you have a dive computer now that doesn't support some functionality that you need as you've continued to get training and you know maybe you moved into uh, side mount diving for example or a technical diving or something like that where you really need some extra features on your computer now for your dive computer pretty much everything's going to support the base recreational open circuit mode which is just breathing off of a regular rebreather where you blow out bubbles off a single tank, just like what we all got taught in our open water class. However, some computers again have extra modes. So for example, you might have a free dive mode where you can actually go free diving and see your descent, your ascent rate, all of that stuff that you would need for free diving. And if you're a free diver, then you should definitely be using some type of dive computer with a free dive mode or a free dive computer specifically. I already mentioned side mount, which is another feature that some computers support, some don't. So it's something that you might want to think about as well. And usually the side mount mode is going to allow you to remember or be reminded of when you need to switch tanks. So off of a time or off of an air pressure type thing where switching from the right tank to the left tank or vice versa. A couple others to think about is, like I mentioned, there's also tech diving that could be out there. So technical open circuit uh, recreational or tech rec, I guess, is a way that you can say that. Um, and, you know, Patty Tech Rec, for example, is something that I'm certified for. And I'm on an open circuit with back mounted doubles or with side mount. And you might want to have a technical mode so you can actually do your decompression stops and have some extra features in there. And if you're a tech diver, you know what I'm talking about there and you should be knowing what to look for a little bit in that computer. Finally, speaking on the technical side and just to be kind of uh, fully complete, I guess, in the different modes that are out there, some dive computers also support CCR or closed circuit rebreathers. And technically you can recreationally dive these. You can also do a tech diving of these. So your computer might have recreational closed circuit and technical closed circuit available, uh, though arguably it's all technical in a sense when you're on a rebreather. So if you're a rebreather diver, again, make sure your computer supports what you need as a rebreather diver with bailout modes and all that different stuff. So as you can see, there really are quite a few different features and things to consider when you're going out to buy that next computer. Now, this is where the sponsor of today's video comes in, Shearwater. Shearwater recently released the Turn and Turn TX dive computers, which have quickly become my top recommendation for divers that are looking to buy either their first dive computer 
or maybe they're making their upgrade after they bought that initial entry level computer. Now, I truly love Shearwater computers for a variety of reasons, but one of the ones that I always tell my students and even just people, again, trying to buy a new computer is Shearwater screens are just so easy to read and some people really struggle to read their dive computers. I know with one of the cheaper dive computers that I have, I won't worry about mentioning the brand, but the screen's just dark, dim, and, and hard to read. And you have to hit a separate button for like the light to come on. And I actually gave it to my girlfriend for a, a dive in Curacao over uh, the winter last year. And unfortunately, uh, it was her first night dive and she didn't realize that there was a button to hit to turn on the light for the backlight of the computer. It wasn't that big of a deal, but she was already a little bit anxious about the night dive. She went down and then tried to just quickly look at her depth as a newer diver and was struggling to be able to read it and tried to shine her flashlight on it. It didn't glow in the dark. She was freaking out and uh, started to have a little bit of a panic, unfortunately. Luckily, she was able to calm herself and realize that she hit a button, the screen lit up, she was able to see everything and it was all good, but this could have been avoided if she was just diving a watch that had a really nice face on it that was already bright and lit. And that's where, again, Shearwater comes in handy. Now with Shearwater computers, you don't really struggle to read them at all. And the Turn and Turn TX have really bright AMOLED screens that you can see in perfect daylight, no problem at all. So just, you know, showing it here as it's on my wrist, you can see it's nice and bright, easy to read, no problems there at all. And there's different brightness settings and things like that too. But then underwater, whether it's on a night dive, a daylight dive, in a cavern, in a rack or anything like that, you can totally see the screen as well. So if I turn off the lights like this, you can still see the screen perfectly fine. So, you know, if you wanna read what's on my dive computer there, I guess it's gonna be upside down for you. You'll be able to read that screen without any problem. And that's at the highest brightness level. But even if I turn it on the lowest level, you can still see there's plenty of light there to be able to read it in a pitch black room. Now, being able to see like that in the dark came in handy just the other weekend actually for me. I was down diving in Florida in some of the springs that are down there and in the different cavern zones there it can get pretty dark even though you're in cavern and you technically have daylight you can see the exit it can still get pretty dark in there but I had no problem at all being able to read the screen of my turn or in this case my turn TX that I was wearing. Now the turn TX version of the dive computers actually allows for air integration. And again, I'll have a video all about air integration linked down below. So make sure you check that one out. But in short, this is gonna give you all your dive information in that one spot now. So again, going back to the caverns, rather than taking my torch and trying to charge my SPG and then reading my SPG, and then going back to my dive computer and seeing what my dive time is and my NDL and all that stuff, I can just see my air pressure right on my dive computer itself. And it makes it so much better than trying to go back and forth between different devices and being able to see everything in one place. This is a huge safety enhancement to have air integration, and it's something that I really love about the Turn TX and other air integrated computers like the Shearwater Perdix and things like that. As an instructor, especially when students are in a little bit more of a panic situation or just more of an anxious situation, like their first night dive or something like that, I've seen them struggle to read their SPG. And you know, again, depending on eyesight and things like that too, it might be hard to read an SPG and get a fully accurate number. But with a dive computer with air integration, it is just crystal clear written on the screen exactly what your air pressure is to the single digit basically right so like if you have 2431 psi you know exactly what it is and you're not saying eh, it's about 2400 you know exactly what your air pressure is Knowing your air pressure also allows you to do additional calculations on the computer itself. So the computer can tell you things like your GTR or your gas time remaining. This is gonna tell you how much time you have left with the current air pressure before you hit your reserve limit that's set on the computer, whether that's 700 PSI, 1000 PSI, etc. You can also have things like sac rate, which is your surface air consumption, basically how quickly you're breathing through your gas and all these other things that are calculated from the gas calculations, basically based off of how quickly you're breathing, how much gas remains, etc. Now, both the Turn and the Turn TX support a variety of dive modes, including the, of course, recreational diving, free diving modes, and even three gas nitrox mode, which basically just allows you to do kind of a tech recreational type thing, or you'd be able to set a few different nitrox gases and things like that. Then with the Turn TX specifically, because it has air integration capabilities, it also has side mount mode because you can actually have a transmitter on both tanks and it can read the pressure of each and tell you when it's time to actually switch between the two. Now, we also talked about battery
batteries and battery life when it comes to features of dive computers. So the Turn and Turn TX, I'm happy to say have both got really great battery life. So as an example, just a couple months ago, I was in the Socorro Islands, which is a few hundred miles off the coast of Mexico out in the Pacific there. And you get to see really cool things like giant manta rays and hammerheads and stuff like that. It was awesome. We were out there for over nine days. We did almost 20 dives. I think it was 19 actually. And my friend had his turn TX with him the entire time. It was on the whole time showing uh, the clock, giving him his time of day and everything like that. He wore it as an everyday watch and he took it on all 19 of those dives. He also had it with him for a few days before and after after the trip while we were in Mexico before we actually left port and then when we returned to port. With all of that use, he didn't have any concerns about the battery life at all and when it was time to actually go and re actually recharge the watch finally, uh, it actually was able to just do it on a wireless charger. So it supports wireless Qi charging, so that's basically all the wireless pads that are out there for the most part. Uh, and then of course it comes with its own little wireless puck as well that has a USB charger in it, so it's really easy to just kind of plug a USB-C cable in there. Um, put the puck on the back of the uh, dive computer itself, or again, just use any wireless Qi charger out there. Now, if you're interested in picking up the Shearwater Turn or the Turn TX, then check out the links in the description down below. Otherwise, let's talk about some of the use cases you should consider when you're picking your next dive computer and how those features might apply to you. First of all, if you typically rent your gear or you're really avid into free diving, then you might not need air integration. For example, if you rent regulators, the dive shop might not want you to actually install an air transmitter onto their rental regulator for liability reasons, or you know maybe they just don't want their gear being modified, quote unquote, right? Uh, and of course, if you're a free diver, then you don't have an air cylinder, so you don't need to have air transmission on there. Unless you're a free diver that also scuba dives, then that might be something that you're interested in. Now, that said, if you have invested in your own regulators, then I think air integration is definitely the way to go and definitely give yourself that possibility. The Turn is going to be just a Turn computer and never allow for air integration, where the Turn TX does allow for air integration, and you do have to buy a separate transmitter for that, but you can buy that transmitter later. If it's just something that you're interested in, I think it's definitely worth going into, and we'll talk about pricing and stuff like that in just a moment. The key thing there is that if you own your own rigs, then having air integration into your computer is just going to give you that full integrated experience on your dive computer, and again, not have to worry about separate gauges and losing out on all those extra functions like the gas time remaining sack rate, stuff like that. Now, I mentioned this with side mount mode in the Turn TX, but if side mount is something that you're doing and you're just kind of furthering your training in general, then make sure the modes that you need are gonna be on the computer as well. And again, that's where something like air integration and side mount mode can be really handy because it'll help tell you to switch from your left tank to your right tank or vice versa with just a little vibration and telling you to switch on your dive computer. Then really for all divers, but especially for travelers, having a dive computer that can be worn as an all day wristwatch like this one here, is just gonna be nice and convenient for you. And it's one less thing to worry about packing and taking with you, right? You don't have to bring your smartwatch and your dive computer watch and then worry about switching between the two and oh no, I left my dive watch back in the room and all that different stuff, right? Instead, it's just on your wrist already. So when you're on your trip, you put your dive watch on, it can stay with you the whole week. You may not even need to charge it for the whole week, depending on what you're doing and how much diving you're doing and all of that. Then you can go home and switch back to your smartwatch or, you know, vice versa, but it's just one less thing and it's a lot more convenient to do it that way. Now, since the Turn and Turn TX can really fit into all these categories I just mentioned and all these different use cases, that's really why it's become my go-to suggestion for new divers or just people looking to upgrade from that entry-level computer. I mean, why wouldn't you want these when they really do check all the boxes for you? Now, if you do want to pick one of these up, you can use the links down in the description below and I'd appreciate it as well. As of the time of this recording, the Shearwater Turn is 650 US dollars and you can get the Shearwater Turn TX for 775 US dollars. Now with the Turn TX, that does allow for air integration, but you do need to have a wireless air transmitter. So the Shearwater Swift, which is their air transmitter, that'll cost 400 US dollars, again, at the time of this recording. But I can save you a little bit of money. So if you are interested in the Turn TX and want air integration as well, you can actually buy these in a bundle and save 100 US dollars. So the total bundle is 1,075 US dollars instead of 1,175. So again, $100 savings by getting the bundle and getting the Swift transmitter with your Turn TX at the exact same time, which honestly, that bundle is a pretty good price for air integrated dive computers. But this probably leads to a lot more questions about air integration. Is it worth it? What is air integration? Why would I want this? Is it going to help me? Is it going to improve my air consumption? All these different questions and more, and these are things that I answer in this video. 
Click or tap the screen now to check that out. And with that, stay safe, have fun, and let's go diving.